Welcome to Media Buying TV, a video series created to help advertisers and media buyers navigate the increasingly complex world of media. This is episode three, comparing broadcast and cable television. I'm Neil Bell, and today we focus on the medium of local television. TV's TV, right? From a viewer's perspective, the answer is often yes. But from a media planning perspective, it's most definitely a big no. There are key differences between these two classes of advertising that are worth examining. First, let's look at how people utilize television over the course of a typical weekday. Here you can see that in the early morning, roughly 20% of households are using television, and viewership peaks at almost 70% in the evening during the primetime viewing hours. This next chart lets us see how viewership is split between broadcast and cable networks throughout the day. It shows us that in the early morning, viewership is concentrated more heavily on broadcast networks. But as the day progresses, viewership is split roughly 50-50. Digging deeper into this share of viewers information, we see that the leading broadcast networks far outpace cable networks in terms of share. But the fact that there are so many more cable networks means that in total, cable viewing is roughly equivalent to that of the broadcast networks for most times of day. If we focus just on the prime time viewing hours, we see that while cable's total share of viewers is about 48.7%, the top four cable networks each only command about a three share of viewers, compared to the broadcast network's range of 9% to 18% shares. The cable networks seem rather small. It's important to note that these are averages and that certain cable programs do enjoy broadcast type shares with some regularity. Examples of this would be high profile sporting events and season finales of programs like Mad Men. To generate a high return on investment from your paid media expenditures, it's not enough to just examine how people consume television content. Advertisers also need to factor in the relative cost of pursuing different tactics. From a cost per rating point basis, we consistently see in local markets that cable costs a bit more for any given day part under consideration. You should note that the cable prices quoted in this example are for broad day part definitions, while the broadcast prices are quoted on a program specific basis. So if we were to get program specific pricing for cable in this example, the cost per point premium would be even higher than what we show here. So what explains this price premium for cable advertising versus broadcast television? It's primarily a function of supply and demand. There are more local advertising breaks in broadcast television than in cable. This is particularly true in local newsday parts, where 100% of the ad inventory is controlled by the local station. In the local cable market we're examining today, there are just two one-minute local ad breaks per hour on each ad insertable network. This results in just four 30-second spot availabilities per network. Of these four local spots per hour, two of them are reserved for special purposes. One special purpose is for cross-channel promotion by the cable system. This is where they promote things like video on demand or bundled phone and internet services. The second special purpose that consumes one ad unit per hour is zoned cable advertising. This is where a small business, like a local pizza shop, wants to just advertise to homes in their neighborhood, not the entire market area. This leaves just two units per hour on each ad insertable network available for purchase by advertisers who are trying to reach the entire market area. This fact, coupled with the fact that some advertisers are less price sensitive. For example, golf courses advertising on the Golf Channel probably aren't looking at cost per point. And the end result is that there are significant ad dollars chasing a pretty small amount of available inventory. Here are the key things you should take away from this examination of broadcast and cable television. First, although total viewing is evenly split between broadcast and cable, broadcast viewing is concentrated into far fewer networks, and cable viewing is more fragmented. Second, local cable advertising is generally more expensive than local broadcast TV advertising. This is due to demand from advertisers targeting niche demographic segments, and due to the reduced inventory of local ad slots. Third, for advertisers seeking to deliver high reach with their campaigns, they must include broadcast in the media mix. Within the realm of cable, they should focus on those 20% of networks that deliver 80% of the cable viewers. 
forth. For advertisers seeking to emphasize frequency of their message delivery, narrow your day parts and your networks, and pummel those slices of TV viewership with your message. Lastly, it's important to note that these examples come from one market, in this case Columbus, Ohio, and do not necessarily reflect your own market reality. But if you break down your situation in a similar fashion, it'll help you draw good conclusions when developing your media plans. That's it for this episode of Media Buying TV. We hope you found it informative. There are a lot of details here. Feel free to post clarifying questions in the comments section. We would love to help explain things further for your specific situation. You should also click on the subscribe button so that you automatically receive notifications when we post new episodes. Wishing you successful marketing of your product or service. This is Neil Bell for Media Buying TV, production of White Rock Media.